All right, so we're going to talk about setting up lighting for your robot within a scene. So, of course, you need your robot, but you also need a background. So what I did is I just went on the online and did a Google search for churches because I needed a background. So I came up with this background here. So I'm going to size it down to something that's a little more comfortable for Maya. Uh, it was originally around 1200 pixels by 700. I'm just sizing it down to about uh, 10 by 24, which is a value that's a little more standard for Maya. Um, from what I've been told, Maya is a little more comfortable with uh, aspect ratios that are based upon values that are consistent with what it's, what it's used to working with. So usually variables of uh, 256, doubling up to 512, doubling up to 1024, doubling up to 20 by 48, so on and so forth. Um, but 1024 by, I think about 678.9 or something like that should be fine for our process here. So I'm taking this image, I'm just going to save it as a JPEG, and then I'm going to bring it into Maya as an image plane. So first I'm going to save it. I'll just save it on my, uh, usually you want to save it in your project, so I'm going to my Maya projects, and I'm working from my default project right now. I'm saving it directly into the project just so that Maya always knows where to find it. This is one reason why you should also set project before you open your scene files, just so that everything always opens up from the same place. So I'm just going to call it church. Save it in there quit out of my software here and go back to my scene now I'm gonna to go to view image plane and import image but actually first I want to actually create a new camera just for this image plane so I've got my new camera now I'm going to view image plane import image or if you're in Maya 2009 you should be able to click on this little icon this fourth one from the uh, left here and it will automatically bring up the source images, which is where Maya looks for certain things by default. And it's exactly that's where Maya looks for textures by default in the in the source images directory of the default project. So if you actually set up your project pr properly, it should automatically go to your source images. And see, there it is, church, first one. So now I have it, and it is currently attached to my camera, which is why I can reposition. I'm zooming in and it's not affecting the image. Whenever you bring in an image into Maya and you're working you're working through the looking through the perspective camera, it'll automatically attach it to it by default. Which actually comes in very handy. Because now it make it a little easier for me to actually position the camera so that my character is in the space just the way I want him at the angle I need him so that he fits into the shot a little better. Now see, I could even put him in the middle of the room, I can put him in the front of the room if I want to. And this is pretty much just zooming the camera around and making sure he's in relatively the right spot at the correct angle. Now it's not going to be perfect, but you just want to use your sense of perspective. You could also come in here and bring up this little grid here which you can hardly see right now but there's a little grid there that is sort of marking off what the perspective is in this image and you can see this shot is almost taking almost dead center of the room so it's almost perfect all right so i'm just going to bring them forward a little bit here and i'm kind of okay with the angle there let's see where do we want them to be though i'm going to put them just a little bit behind this light and so we have a woman in the image here, so we can actually even get a sense of how big or how small he should be at this point in the room, if I wanted to put him back in the center of the room there. Or how tall I want him to be. Okay, so let's say I wanted him there, but I'm going to bring him a little closer to the camera here. So I'll put him maybe just under that light fixture, or as close to it as we can guess. So now we need to decide how many lights, 
uh, what shadows are actually affecting him or the area around him. So let me just hide my grid for a second here. You can do that by going to show and just unchecking grid and it gets, rid it gets the grid out of the way. And if you look at your shadows, they usually are a good indicator of where the most intense light source is coming from. This room's a little difficult because it actually has a lot of light sources. But we have intense light coming through our windows here, and as, and as you can see, it's streaking across the floor there. So there's, it looks like there's a large open doorway here to the right. And so I think the sun is actually primarily in that direction. If we can find a really dark shadow, I'm seeing a few dark shadows here. But that can mostly be bounce light, but oh, the darkest shadows do appear to be this side, so I think the most intense light is coming from the right side. Even on your little on your little post here, dark shadows, darkest shadows are on this side. And I think that's mostly from our door. We're getting other shadows being cast by other light sources around in the room, but it looks like the darkest shadows appear to be leaning towards the left side. Even here on the wood, we're actually getting light from a higher angle coming in here and it's diffusing the shadows that are being created by the bounce light on the other side. While this other side also, well, the shadows there are getting diffused too. Okay, so this looks like kind of an old church, so I'm thinking maybe this guy might be a little too big because I very much doubt two people could fit in this aisle with him at this size. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and reposition him so he's maybe he's a little smaller relative to where he is in the space zoom in a bit and put him to one side and then I think that should be good enough okay try to make him look a little more logically scaled there and we'll just say he's walking down the aisle on that side past the light or just ahead of the light and we'll kind of try and re-angle him and make sure the perspective's right here. Well, at least get as close as possible as he can. Okay, we'll say that's it for now. So now we want to try to actually start setting up lights. Right now, Maya's using a default light to actually render the character. On screen, you don't actually see any lights unless you press 7 on your keyboard. You don't see the effects of the light, so I'm going to press 7. And as you see, there's no lights, um, because he actually highlight just pretty much goes solid black, because there's no lights on him. But if we actually go to Create Lights, and let's create a point light. I'm going to call that point light this light up here. So we'll start with that light. Notice, we actually start to get an indication of light on it. So right now, because I want to keep this camera right where it is, I'm going to select this camera by going to View, Select Camera. It selects it in our channel boxes to the right. I'm going to select over the names just by left-clicking on the first name and holding and dragging all the way down. And then I'm going to right-click after I release the left-click, of course. I'm going to get this little pop-up list. Now, almost near the bottom, you see it says lock selected. I'm going to lock select it for this camera. So now, I shouldn't be able to reposition this camera at all. See, I'm trying to move it. Can't move it. Can't pan. Can't tilt. Nothing. So that's what I want for that camera right now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to panels, and I'm going to tell Maya to tear off a copy of this existing camera. And it'll make this smaller window which I can scale and just put off to the side just so I can check my work as I'm working. And then I'm going back to my main window and go to panels. I'm going to switch back to my default perspective camera. And so now I can just concentrate on fixing the light. And so, speaking of, I'm going to grab that little point light that I created that's sitting right between his feet. And I'm going to try to position it so that it is in relatively the same position as the light above his head. Now, also in this other perspective view, I'm actually going to hide the image because it's actually just a distraction there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to show, and I'm going to uncheck cameras so I can't see it. 
because that plane is connected to the camera. So now I'm going to position my light. And in my perspective camera, I'm going to disable lights just so it'll render a little fat, do the hardware render a little faster here. And so I'm going to position it. I'll even put it about the same height as what's in the image. Not really necessary, but just for position's sake. So we have our light up there now, okay? And I said he was coming towards the light, so the light is in front of him. I'll move it back a little bit, maybe just so it's a little closer to being directly above him. But I don't think it is. I think it's still more in front of him. Now notice how the quality of light actually changes on him as I move it. The angle of the light. I'm going to pay attention to all those little details. I don't know if you can see it that small though. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay, so as I bring the light back, you get more shadow in his body, bring it forward, more light, diffuses more of the shadow. So, we'll leave that point light there. Now, with every one of your lights, you need to actually assign a color as well, because lights don't just come out as white light. Depending on how they're created and the things they pass through and the out the surfaces they bounce off of, they acquire different hues. And so you want to actually give your light a color. So while you have your light selected, press Control A on the keyboard to bring up your attribute editor. And then you can go to Point Light Attributes and you can choose a color. Just click on the little rectangle next to the word color. It brings up the color chooser. And we can choose a color for our light source. And as you choose it, notice it will update in your perspective camera view. And I'm looking at the lighting in that perspective view. I'm also... I'm looking at it I can with just the regular shaders I could activate high quality mode just so we can get an even stronger sense of how it's actually affecting the character which is a good idea to do you notice it got a little a li the tone matches a little more with the lighting that's actually in the scene now and so I'm gonna go let's see I'm gonna see if I can go a little more amber with our light Too much, too much. So I'm going to desaturate it up just a little bit. Now another thing to consider when you're lighting is that not every light source is going to be 100%. Right now in this room, this point light I'd say probably is the most powerful light source, but it's not the only one. So I'm going to set it at, say, 0.8 for now. If I decide to want to increase it later, I will. But I'm just gonna leave it at 0.8. That's pretty normal. And in my window, my copy of my my primary camera, I'm actually gonna go to lighting and tell it to only use the selected light sources. This way I can just have it just show the lights I have currently selected. Notice I deselected the light source and it's showing the character in silhouette again. I can do the same thing in my uh working camera over here as well but I won't for now so now I'm actually just going to select that same light source I'm just going to duplicate it control D on the keyboard or Apple D on the keyboard if you're on a Mac and so now I want to actually try to simulate some of these other light sources that are causing light on light on it so it, based upon the shadows it looks like we're getting light from a window high, high above, as well as from a doorway, both on the right side. So what I'm going to do to simplify it a little bit is I'm actually just going to take this point light, move it off to the side, and you can see how the light's changing. And I'm going to center it kind of in between that area, even though I'm probably going to get shadow from our... Uh, from that little pediment that seems to stretch through the the entablature that stretches the length of the church. So let's see. I'm just going to put it right there. I mean, once we we're not going to be able to match the lighting perfectly, but we want to try and get close. So you could keep using a point light, but if we want to just generally have this light show up on this side of his body, and not worry about how high or how low the light source is. 
uh, position wise we can actually change the light into a directional light so I'm going to press control A bring up the attribute editor and right under where it says point light attributes we have type and it's point light so I'm going to switch that type and make it into a directional light and so now you have a directional light now the arrows that you have there are actually determining which directional light's coming from or pointing as to which direction the light's going so right now that light is actually pointing directly at him <laughs> so I'm just going to rotate it about 90 degrees and have it come from the side and as you can see in our torn off camera it updates right away and the light is indeed coming from that side entirely And so with directional lights, it doesn't really matter how close or how far the far it is from the character. It's the angle that matters. Whatever angle that light source is set for, that's the angle the light is going to come from, no matter what. Now, just looking at the light in the windows, it really does look like the intensity of the light from the left side is more intense. Or it's much higher. So what I'm going to do here is I'm pretty sure this is sunlight with a little bit of bounce light. I'm going to tilt the angle just a little bit so it looks like it's coming from a higher angle but still generally coming in. And then I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to move it to the other side. I'm going to go to my channels box. Let's see, that angle is that one right there. I'm going to set it to negative 83 degrees, which pretty much just reverses the angle. Whoops, I accidentally closed my window. I'm going to bring up perspective one, five, bring back up my uh, camera for this window, and let's take a look high quality and so I'm going to select both of these lights so I got that light and that light I'm going to set it again so that it shows selected lights and so we have that light and we have this light and we have a point light up here and so that's currently our lighting for this scene now of course it still needs some tweaking and I probably should add a couple more lights just to simulate the bounce light coming from in whatever light's coming from in front of him as well as from behind him or maybe I could even angle my light sources a little more because I can see in that window over here that the light is hitting the intensity here it's much higher than it is up top or on the bottom the same for the other window so I will actually just use rotate just to angle it a little more towards so it's actually coming a little more from the front because we're more worried about the front than we are about the back right and so I'm selecting both of these lights and we're diffusing the shadows a little better there. I could probably even turn one of these a little more just to make some of that diffuse some of that shadow a little more, especially from the side that is going to be our one of our primary light sources. But right now, I think what we have is going to work for the moment. And that's some of the basics on setting up some of your lighting. Now all of these are at 0.8, so it would be a good idea to go in here and sort of make some choices. Drop some of them a little and increase others a little more. This one I'm actually going to decrease to 6.5. And that's only because the shadow down here is much darker, so obviously this light isn't diffusing, diffusing as much. And I'll leave this one at 0.8, because the shadow over here is very diffused. Yeah, and I think I like that better. It's a little better. Subtle differences, but I think I like it. Okay, so now that we actually have some lighting that we kind of like, so here's a little test render that I did. Lighting looks alright, right? Looks like he kind of fits in there. He's got some of that yellow hue on him, picking up some of the shadows, nothing too, t nothing too dark. 
except for here on this inner army on this side they're a little darker just like these shadows are that's what we wanted to sort of go for so now we need to basically talk about picking up some some indication that he's actually on the floor meaning casting a shadow so the tricky part here is that the image actually isn't here and we're not necessarily going to render with the image in the background because we can actually comp this later I mean, or we can render it with the image but we still need to pick up the floor in there so how are we going to do that? First of all, we need to put a floor below it. So in order to do that, we're going to do something simple. We're going to just make a polygon plane. So, go to your polygon shelf. Or you can even go up to create polygon primitives and say plane. It creates a plane at the zero coordinate within the world space. And then you can just scale it up. And don't worry about it blocking out your image. You primarily want it there just to catch a shadow. And so it doesn't necessarily even have to fill the space, it just depends on where a shadow is going to be cast. Now to actually get our get shadows, we need to turn our lights to actually cast shadows. And so first, we're going to select the light source. I'll do our point light first, which is up top. And in this case, I will choose, I'm going to use ray trace shadows. You can use depth map shadows or ray trace shadows. Uh, I'll show you both. So ray trace shadows. All you have to do: select the light source, press Control A, bring up the attribute editor, scroll down to where it says shadows. Hit the little arrow. It'll pop up a little pull down. Scroll down until you see ray trace shadows, and just put a little check mark in the box, and that turns on ray trace shadows. Now. To improve how these shadows actually turn out, you pretty much, you know, how clean they are, how smooth they are. Usually all you have to do is adjust a few values. So let's just take a look and see what our shadows look like at the moment. And don't worry about the fact that it's going to block out the background image. We'll take care of that too. So right now, the point light isn't really, really isn't casting much of a shadow. And that's because I didn't render with mental ray. In order to see ray trace shadows, you have to render with mental ray. So, choose mental ray in your render view in your render settings. Render settings again. If you go towards the upper right in the Maya window, you have these little time markers, movie time markers. The one with the two dots before it, that's the one for render settings. And so you want to go to render using and choose mental ray. If you don't have mental ray available, you just have to make sure that you load it. To load it, you go to Window, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager. It'll bring up this little window. It's got a lot of little plugins that are all checked and some not. These are all things that you may or may not be using currently, but may use in the future. So, okay. So what you want to find is Maya to MR, which stands for Maya to Mentor, and just make sure that it's loaded. And then just close that window. And once you've done that, you should be able to go back to your render settings and choose Mental Ray. Okay? So once you've chosen Mental Ray, you can go over to Quality. And right now we're just doing some testing, so maybe you want to set it for Preview. Just so you can get a sense. And then if I re-render this image... we get a shadow cast by our little point light. Okay, not bad, right? So, one thing you want to consider is that the shadow from our guy here is pretty intense. Don't worry about that so much yet. Just make sure you get all your shadows being created by all the light sources first. Then we'll work on intensity. So the next light source we want to we want to turn shadows on for would be our directional lights. And it's going to be the same process. Select the light source, attribute editor, shadows, and find ray tracing just by scrolling down, ray tracing, ray trace shadow attributes. Click the checkbox, turns on your shadows. You increase your shadow rays to say 10 should give you a much nicer shadow when it renders. 
We can do that for both light sources. One will give you a fairly sharp edge light source, not necessarily the most pleasing. Okay, so I'm just going to select an area and just have it render that. And so now we get a shadow stretching out across, coming out from his feet. Okay, notice how light it is relative to the light source creating the light. It's also being diffused by the other light sources. And that's why we use multiple light sources. You don't really, I know some people will create a single light, and you can actually change the color of your shadows. But if you're actually setting up your light properly, you shouldn't have to change the color of your shadows. So I'm going to choose our last light source, and once again, I'm going to activate Ray Trace Shadows in the Attribute Editor, increase my light rays, and I'm going to close that for now. And we'll test. Okay, and so now we have our shadows coming in there nicely. All right. Now, if we want these, we're not going to worry about making the shadows fall across the furniture. So let's do this. We're going to actually take the floor, and we're going to shorten it so it fits within the range of our pews here. So I'm going to select that plane. I'm just going to scale it in along the x-axis. Now hopefully if I got the perspective right, it should fit well enough in the aisle. Obviously, my angle on the character is not appropriate for the floor, but I'm just going to rotate it to make it match a little better. So, now when he casts a shadow, it should stay within that area. Re-render. Take a look. Alright, so now we got his shadows in the area of the aisle. We're almost there. So now the next part is to get those shadows to show up without that plane being there. This part can be a little tricky, but it's actually not that difficult. We're going to create a new shader for this. We went over shaders before and a couple of modules ago, so this shouldn't be anything very alien, but just pay careful attention. So I'm going to go to Assign New Material. And from the pull down, instead of choosing a Lambert, a Fong, or a Blend, I'm going to choose Use Background. The Use Background shader is created so that it allows you to actually catch things to use for a separate background. So in this case, we want to catch shadows. So if you just want to catch shadows and not a reflection of the character, you need to make sure you turn off everything except the shadow mask. So, reflectivity, zero. Reflection limit, zero. Once that's done, and you do another test render, now we should have shadows on the floor of the church. And there we go. Shadows on the floor of our church, and they're blending in rather well. Now we could probably use a little more work on the shadows themselves to diffuse them so they don't stand out so they actually uh, blend in a little better. But that's essentially compositing your character into a Maya scene just by adjusting a few lights and adding an image plane.